welcome to the latest episode of the the comically named Talking Balls podcast. Um, I always try and get a rise from the guests, and there's a bit of a grin from Hayden there, so I'm happy with that. We, we got that for the Talking Balls, um, and I'm going to introduce for the for the first time and not for the last time. I'm going to introduce uh, my co-host, uh, and it's Lee Max. So Lee, if you'd like, just say hi. Yeah, hi everybody. Uh, it's good to be here. It's great to have Hayden on. Uh, we're going to get a good insight into how real snookers played. <laughs> yeah, and the background to that, thanks, Lee. The background to that is that me and Lee have met each other really through the PlayStation game, so the Snooker 19 PlayStation League, um, which for me has certainly rekindled my interest in the real sport, and that's that's what's got this podcast going in a way. So, so Hayden, I mean, thanks a lot. Hayden Stanleyland is our is our guest today. Um, I came across Hayden really through, and, I, and I've deliberately put on a Nottinghamshire cricket shirt on just to <laughs> let people know that this is a Nottingham thing. And, and I know Hayden, you kind of you're based up in Worksop, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, Worksop, yeah. And uh, and you've been, you know, I've been following your, your fortunes since kind of getting to know more about the local scene and who's around. So obviously, it extends to more than Michael Holt and Anthony Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Um, and so Q School, would you just tell us a little bit? I mean, I, you know, unfortunately you didn't get on the tour, but some of your performances in Q School this season were really eye-catching. I mean, one in particular, really quite an impressive one. I just wonder how you reflect on Q School when you look back at that and, you know, it feels like you're getting closer to your ultimate goal. Well, definitely. I mean, there's, there's lots of positives and negatives to take from Q School. Obviously, there always is. But um, I think this year in particular... Um, I, I, thinking back on it, I didn't I didn't play amazing through Q School. That wasn't my bet, my greatest of tournaments. Um, but like you said, the the performance against Lu Hong Hao in the first the mm. first event when I won four one, I I played I played really solid, and you know I I, I didn't give him much, much opportunity because obviously I knew that he's he's a professional just fell off the tour, so I know that he's all match sharp, and and, and if mm. you leave him on, he'll punish you. So. I tried to keep him as tight as possible and uh, and it worked out in the end, so I'm happy with that. Um, and the other ones, that I didn't play my best. I battled hard, but unfortunately, I just came up short in the end. Yeah, and you said on your Facebook blog there, I think, uh, Hayden, you were reflecting, I think, and you said about putting pressure on yourself and how you can get into a bit of a negative mindset in some of your matches. Yeah, that's, that's probably my biggest downfall at the moment. Um, obviously, I'm still young. I'm still fairly inexperienced in, in that. Uh, re remark so obviously just it's it's frustrating because I I know that I can I know how good I, how good I can be um, and it's it's just obviously it's it's hard to bring it you can't bring it out in every possible match but I just seem to put too much pressure on myself uh, at the key moments in the matches instead of just getting on with it I, like, I tend to stop and think about it a bit too much and, and then I, like, I bog myself down a little bit into a hole and, and it's really difficult to get out of it and then obviously I tend to lose from the positions that I'm in. So, yeah, and, and I guess Lee, you could probably identify with some of that in terms of when you're at the table and how your mind can get involved. Yeah, but I guess it's all very much on the day, how you're feeling on the day, because uh, going to your your under twenty one European Championships, uh, you, you had a great run in that. You lost uh, five two to Aaron Hill. Yeah, a, yeah. a fantastic player. Uh, but you're saying you sort of snatch and uh, defeat for the jaws of victory, but in that tournament you, you had three matches that were four three. I think your last yeah. thirty two, your quarter final and your semi final, you won those four three. So I suppose it's very much on the day and how yeah. you're feeling. Definitely, definitely. I mean, obviously that was that was a massive tournament for me, really. I mean, I I thoroughly enjoyed it, obviously, and. Uh, and it was like I say, I went into that with no pressure. That was that's completely different because I, it was the first time I'd ever really known anything about that tournament. So I just went in. Nobody knew who I was. I didn't know anybody else was. Um, so I just went in there and just played snooker. And then obviously th th I got confidence from winning a couple of matches, um, and I started to believe in myself the further on in the tournament that I got. And then obviously getting to the final it surprised me but obviously I'll, I'll take it and, and yeah I'm really pleased with that. Yeah it was a fantastic result and if you'd won that final would you have gained your tour card? Yeah yeah. Yeah tour card on the line so you're, you're very close. Yeah yeah very close but obviously uh, hopefully I can go back there again and, and try and try and get one step further this time. 
Yeah, and I suppose if that match with Arne had went to a deciding frame, you would have fancied your chances, given your, your previous yeah. four, three wins. Yeah, yeah, obviously, like you said earlier, I've got over half my matches, really, had gone into deciding frames, so I was I was used to that, and, and I, I held myself together well in those matches, so I knew that I knew that I could do it if it got to a decider. So yeah, that was that was on my side, but unfortunately, it didn't get that far. Yeah, fantastic! It was a great run. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, very impressive. And um, uh, Steve Butler. So Steve, somebody who kind of runs a Nottingham snooker group and, and on the Facebook, and I know he's a re- pretty decent player himself. Um, he's asked me some questions, Hayden, and this one relates to Q School. So he was just asking. Was it all positive? And is there any way that you think that the whole Q School experience could be improved? Um, what the format does it mean, or just? I think so. Yeah, I think I think in terms of yeah the format, the way it's structured and set up. How do you feel about it? I don't think really. It's a tricky one because there's there's obviously so many entries in the to- in in Q School, and there's so many ways that you could run the tournament but at the end of the day you're not going to please everybody there's mm. there's always going to be some people that don't agree with the form I mean personally I don't think I don't see how you could do it any differently it's it's fair for everybody it, it, I mean this year they did it um they did a seeding a, a seeding format this year and luckily for me I was one of the seeds um so when it look at it like that, I think it, it was run really well. I don't think you could run it any any other way. Uh, everyone's got as equal a chance as, as as everybody else. And and for me, really, my opinion is if if you're good enough, then you will win and you will get through. So that so I think uh, in that respect, it's run it's run as good as it could be really with the the amount of entries that's in it. So but for me, it was uh, I think it was run really well. Yeah. Was it enjoyable, you know, when you reflect on it? I know it's not enjoyable not reaching the level you wanted to, but do you did you find the experience enjoyable? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and it's obviously, like I said earlier, I'm still inexperienced in tournaments like that. So it, it gained me valuable experience. And um and, and when you like when you're playing in those conditions in your waistcoat and you've got the world snooker banners around it, it makes you feel like you're in a proper tournament and Mm. And and I, I I feel like I play better when I'm in that situation, and it it really like it, it gets your butterflies going in your stomach uh, when you're playing in those conditions. So it's really good, yeah. Really enjoyed it. It was quite interesting as well. The the guys that qualified through Q School, you know, I think it was just Dean Young, who's you know Dean's pretty young and yeah. inexperienced, but the other guys that qualified, uh, they've been on the tour before. Exactly, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it didn't shock me in a way that because obviously the the pros that that's just fell off the tour and they, they they've obviously got more experience, but they're much sharp because obviously with the unfortunate situation of COVID this season, um, the amateurs have, have really struggled and and because yeah. they've not been in the tournaments to play, so the pros have obviously been fortunate enough to be able to play week in week out on the tour and things. So getting into Q school, I think that played a massive part, um, and that's. Hence, why the the majority of people that qualified were the, the pros that had just fell off the tour. Yeah, and the pros' experience goes a long way as well. Exactly. Yeah, they've more than likely they've been there and done that before. They they know what it's like to to get onto to get onto the tour through Q School. So yeah, that 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 plays a massive part. Yeah. And how do you feel about that, Aidan? You know, I, I listened to a podcast not long ago with Peter Lyons was the guest on there. Um, and he was saying about, you know, there's been a, in some sections people feeling that it should be about bringing youngsters through and, and Peter, people like Peter almost not not blocking the way, which sounds like a, uh, a cruel way to say it in a sense. But how do you feel about it when you look at that? I, I think, obviously, I understand what people are saying about the youngsters, because obviously the youngsters are, are the future of the game. Um, but like I said earlier, if, if the youngsters are good enough like myself then we will qualify and and, and I think mm. we'll, we'll we will get there eventually uh, but it's just at the moment that the the more experienced guys are, are just that little bit extra they've got that extra little bit on us at the moment so mm. that's that's the only difference at the minute and I think it's it's only a matter of time before the youngsters like catch up in a way uh, and get yeah. to that next level 
yeah in a way perhaps playing them gives you that insight into where you need to go to be able to beat them and then you're learning from them aren't you exactly yeah I mean you learn a lot more from losing than you do winning I mean I've I've realised that over the last year to 18 months, but obviously playing the better players and, and playing the, the pros on the tour and things like that, it's you learn a lot more from, from, from losing than you would winning because you understand, you start thinking and analysing what you did wrong and trying to put that into your practice when you're playing on your own and, and, and thinking about where you went wrong in the games and, and, it, and it helps you, definitely. It helped me anyway. Yeah, and you mentioned the dress code as well. You said about it was nice to dress up and feel like you were more involved in that that level of co of competition. So, do you like that? You know, some of the, the there's obviously been the Judd Trump comments lately about the image of the sport and whether it should be made more casual to appeal to more people outside. And what what do you think of that? Well, I obviously I, I well I, I loved it. I absolutely loved it. I mean, it was the same in Portugal when I played there. It was a waistcoat, and obviously. I, again, I'm not used to playing in the waistcoat, so it makes you feel I'm 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 up for the for the dress code. I think it's it looks good for the game. It 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 makes obviously the appearance of the game look a lot better. I think for me, if it was casual, I, I'd, I'd probably just treat it like a like a practice match. Mm. So I wouldn't so I wouldn't really get up for it as much. Whereas if you're putting your your waistcoat on and your your bow tie on and things, it it makes you feel it gives you your butterflies and it it, it gets you up for the game. Yeah, I, I was always the same, Hayden. It was uh, if you made a final or you're you're playing at Europeans or whatever, there's a sense of occasion when you're yeah. you're in your room, you're getting dressed up for you go and play your match. It's a sense of occasion, and it's a great feeling. It, there's no, there's no better feeling for me. It's, it's just like I say, yeah, Obviously, I get nervous in, in ahead of any match, but. But the finals and things like that, and, and when you're getting your waistcoat on to playing Q School and the World Championships and things, it's it's such a great feeling, and, and it's something that I want to experience over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Lee, did you have any any thoughts in terms of you know maybe some questions around whether it's about practicing and different ways of preparing? Yeah, I think it's it's always interesting to ask you know guests how how they practice and. You know, everybody's got their own way. Do, do you sort of, do you like playing people or do you like the solo practice a bit more? I like a bit, of, a bit of both. I like a bit of both because um, obviously when I turn up for a practice session, I, I try and do two or three hours on my own, trying to like get my arm going and trying to get into the into the feel of playing. Um, yeah. And then like, in the afternoon, I, like, I go around trying to play people and things, trying to trying to put into the match what you've, what you've done in the practice in the morning. Um, so I, I do a bit of both, but I do I, I, I find it more enjoyable and more worthwhile playing against people. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what sort of players do you play? Have you got some pros that are close by that you get games with or I'm, good I'm, amateurs? I, I practice in uh, Dings Academy, the Dings Young Way Academy. It's just opened up in Sheffield. Um, so it's like it's only half an hour down the road from me. So um, yeah. luckily enough, I'm, I'm, I'm able to practice in there and... Uh, obviously, the majority of the Chinese players practice here as well. Um, there's a couple of um, there's a couple of English and Welsh pros in here as well. Um, so I just practice with those really. Um, there's so many. So the really, you've got an abundance of players that you can play. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And and there's um, obviously before COVID and things like that, there was there was a lot of top amateurs coming in, and there still is. There's a lot of top amateurs in as well. So it's it's not just the pros that you can play. There's a variety of players, and 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 it's all good for for experience and. And worthwhile for the matches that you play. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, it sounds really cool. And, and I suppose that blend of different styles and players means you're kind of on your toes a bit, doesn't it? And this is from a non-decent player, but I'm guessing Definitely. it's good for you. <laughs> yeah, because like, because when you're playing these people, you know that the they're obviously top top players. So when you make a mistake, the chances are that you you're picking balls out for the rest of the frame. So it, it, it puts you under more pressure, but it's good pressure because you know that, like I said, that you can't afford to make mistakes. And when you do make mistakes, you've got to analyse those and to make sure that next time you, you don't make that mistake. Yeah, and diff different players are putting you in different situations. You know, everybody's, everybody's got their strengths and weaknesses. So the amount of players you must be playing, uh, you're, you're going to get a variety of uh, you know, different shots to play. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, obviously, you, some some people are 
like the Chinese guys, their their brake building is is fabulous. They're just yeah. Every, every time they get in, they they're knocking frame and brakes in all the time, and it's like it's demoralising in a way, but it's it's inspiring because it's the level that I've got to get to to, to be able to turn professional. So, uh, but then you get some people like who are better at the safety play, so they can tie you up in in different positions. So it every aspect of my game is being tested, and and every aspect of my game is improving improving every day from playing these people. Yeah, fantastic. I can tell already, Hayden, just from your attitude to life that you're on that right trajectory because you're talking very positively about learning from defeats or different styles and what you're aspiring to. You've got a real focus, haven't you? You can kind of see that straight away. Definitely, definitely yeah. I mean, I've in the past, I've been, like I said earlier, I've been, I've been bogged down through my own attitude and like turning, like as soon as it goes negative in a match, then my head sort of dropped um, and, and when it gets like that, it's very difficult to turn it around again and it's very difficult to get back up. But from, from learning from those situations, I'm now, if it, if it goes, if it, if it doesn't go your way in a match, which it, it, it can't go your way all the time, um, then you've just got to turn it into positives and the positives are going to outweigh the negatives um, any day. So obviously you've just got to look at the positives and, and, and that's how you, you gain your confidence. Yeah, and is there any support for that? You know, I'm really interested in that, the mindset thing and about how you, you know, you can do the technical skills, but is there any support around to help with, you know, positive mental attitude or or just generally how you approach it in that way? There's obviously um, sports psychiatrists and people like that. Obviously, um, there's the, the, there's some, obviously I've, I've looked at that and, and it's, a poss- it's a route that I might go down for 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 a sports psychiatrist because obviously it's a lot, like three quarters of the game is all in the mind. I mean, everybody can play the game. Uh, like all the pros can, can play. They're all similar ability really. But, but it's that extra little bit in between the ears that, that make all the difference. So if you can get that right, then, then that's a lot of the battle won really. Yeah, I mean, that, that's certainly something. I mean, when, I think Gary Wilson credited um, it was Steve McLaren's son, actually, when we had our episode. And it was uh, Josh McLaren, I think, was helping him out with that side of life. And he's got quite well-documented problems that he's had you know, recently with depression and the way he's felt at the table. But also, I think Jackson Page, we recorded the other day, he was saying about he didn't see it as necessarily the mental side per se. He was talking more about consistency and that that's what would mark out the good players from the, you know, or the better players from the good players, that yeah, consistency. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. I would say con- the the difference between the the difference between like the top sixteen players and and the players that in the are hovering around the sixty four mark is like for me anyway. It, it's just the ability to be able to score. They, they do it frame like Ronnie O'Sullivan and Judd Trump. The like centuries every other frame. And it's like, and, and, and when they're not making centuries, they're making 60s, 70s, 80s, which is enough to win frames. But like, for me, like, obviously I, I, I won't be able to do that as consistently as them. So, and that's the difference really. It's just that consistency, which will make the difference in the end. I always think that's why it's such an interesting sport because you can't directly influence your opponent while they're doing it. Well, unless you try and put them off, but you normally get told off for that. Um, but again, it's that thing, isn't it? Once they're there, but also once you're there, it's almost that thing that's between you and the table, isn't it? And if you can get your head down and get going, it doesn't matter how good the play you're against is because you can... Exactly. I've always, I've always thought this and I'll, I'll always think it, that I think snooker is one of the hardest sports, if not the hardest sport there is. Because, like in golf, if your opponent hits a hits a good shot, you can go and hit one straight back again. In darts, if your opponent hits a one eighty, you can go and hit a one eighty straight away. In snooker, if your opponent knocks a long red in, then you've got to go and sit in your chair and hope for them to miss. It's out of your hands. So, in that respect, it's it's such a difficult game, and 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 it's happened to me loads of times where I've actually played really well and not done anything wrong and lost. Mm-hmm. It must be demoralising, you know, sitting in your seat when somebody's knocking in break after break, frame after frame. And it always fascinates me because you could probably do a lot of damage to yourself sitting in your seat. You, you, you know, I mean, you've not, done, you've not done anything wrong, but your, your mind's sort of breaking down in a way. Exactly, yeah. And obviously that, that's, that's where the mental side of things come in because obviously... You, when it's like that, obviously, I've, 
I try and think when it, if it goes like that, I just got to try and think that that's the game of snooker. That's how it can go sometimes. Uh, it doesn't always go your way, and, and and I've just got to look at myself and what I did wrong in that situation. Um, and if there's nothing that I can, if, if there's nothing that I could have done differently, um, then it makes me feel better, and I'm in a better frame of mind. And but if I've missed a black off the spot or something, and then my opponents made a century off it, then that's when you start kicking yeah, yourself. Beaten. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a brutal sport mentally. It is. It's a brutal sport, but we love it. But then we hate it as well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very true. <laughs> so, so we talked a little bit about Q school, but if we go back to last season, you've already kind of hinted that with the pandemic, it's been a really different year and, and difficult to get the practice, like you say, and the full range of tournaments. But you did get involved in some tournaments and obviously a late call up here and there. I mean, how do you look back, Milton Keynes, etc.? Look at last season. How do you feel about it looking back? Well, it's it's obviously been a, a fantastic like 12 to 18 months for me. And and I've all, and I've said to myself a few times, um, if, if you'd have told me two years ago what would have happened in the next two years, I'd, I'd have laughed at you. I'd, I wouldn't have believed it at all. Like playing in the World Championship two years running, playing in the shootout, getting to the final of the Europeans. It, and it's all happened so quick um, that it's 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 been fantastic and I've loved every minute of it. Um, and it's just made me even hungrier to improve more and, and, and to, to my next goal is, is to be uh, getting myself on the tour. So it's been fantastic. Just going back to the shootout, Hayden, uh, what sort of experience was that like for you? Is it that sort of love it or hate it? <laughs> Yeah, because it, it, it's got different views on the tour, but I loved it. Obviously, it's it's my, it was my first time ever on telly. I know it's only ten minutes, but it was it was the first ever time that I was on TV, so that was really nerve wracking. But um, it's a funny story actually, because obviously the the shootout started on the Thursday, uh, yeah. but on the Wednesday, um, it was in the middle of like lockdown and things like that. Uh, I was just practicing in my local club. Luckily. Uh, North Knox Community Arena in Worksop, they they allowed me to come in practicing in the lockdown. And I was just going down there just on a normal Wednesday. And then I got a, an email on my phone from World Snooker saying, we're looking for a first reserve uh, and we need you to be in Milton Keynes by like five o'clock this evening. And wow. I, like, I just panicked. So I just quickly like, I, I chucked my cue in my case, ran home. I had to quickly get something to eat, pack my bags and then straight off to Milton Keynes. Uh, but just as I was setting off, Paul Collier rang me from World Snooker saying um, that Lu Ning from China, he's dropped out. So you, you are playing and you're the third match on tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> wow. so in the space of 24 hours, I'm just going from just having my breakfast on a Wednesday, just going down into local snooker for a practice to playing on TV in less than 24 hours. <laughs> it was really... <laughs> It was a quick turnaround, and yeah, but it was a fantastic experience, and, and I can't wait to do it again. Yeah, great. I take it you've got that recorded then, have you, Hayden? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's mainly <laughs> for my mum and dad's benefit because I, I, I feel really embarrassed watching myself. I can't, I can't do it I just because it just <laughs> embarrasses me. <laughs> You talked there about the, the North Not Serena, you know, the community and all of that. I mean, that's something Steve was interested in, actually, Steve Butler. He asked how, how it's been, how influential it's been on your development. And are, are there any other venues or people that have been a big help in your development so far? Well, obviously, the, the North Not Serena has been a massive benefit because throughout the because throughout the lockdown I wouldn't have been able to play and I mean he, the manager there Nigel Turner he, uh, at the time he approached me and said look we, we're really interested in your game we, we know that you're improving um, and we're looking um, to help you as much as possible so if you'd like to come in during lockdown then you're more than welcome um, so it, for that for that reason it was a fantastic opportunity and it kept me it kept me up, up to up to date with my playing and, and things like that um, and there's been um, obviously a few people in Dings that I've been practicing with as well. They've helped me massively. And um, there's been a couple of people who are playing the league in in in, in Workshop League in the North Arts Arena. They've helped me massively. Um, Macaulay Croft being one of them. He he he, um, he doesn't do Q school or things like that, but he's helped me massively. He's, he's been playing with me, um, practicing with me and stuff throughout the, the lockdown and things. So it's been a massive help and. And I can't thank them enough, really, because it's I wouldn't be where I am now without them. 
That's great. We'll do it. We'll make sure that we get, put a shout out in the description when we, did, we put this together. We'll make sure we get a mention there. So that, that sounds really good. And, and in terms of your, your proudest achievement, you know, so far, it's, you know, it's funny, isn't it? You ask this of somebody at the other end of their career, but your early days. But what would you say your proudest achievement is so far? I'd, I'd probably say the proudest achievement would be getting to the final in the Europeans because mm. it was it was such a it was such a surprise for me really as well um, more than anybody else um, because it was I've never heard of the tournament I didn't even know anything about the tournament until I got the email that I entered into it um, and obviously it was my first tournament abroad never played so. Obviously, it was a different experience carrying your queue through the airport and things like that and worrying <laughs> about it, see if it was getting there on time and things. Um, but I'd say that's my biggest achievement, definitely, getting to the final and being one match away from professional, definitely. Yeah, I mean, what a story that would have been. You, you know, just what you've described there and to go on and win it and, and get a tour card, that would have been amazing. I and mean, you were so close. Definitely, yeah. Like I said, it, 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 it surprised me more than anybody. Uh, I mean, I, I, I knew I had it in me, but I mean, like I said, I was just going there just to enjoy it. And, and, and I said to myself, if you get out of the groups, you've done a, you've done a brilliant job. Uh, and I, and I, I've really passed through the groups with flying colours, to be fair. Um, and then I just kept winning after that. Like I said, I had a couple of deciders when it could have gone against me, but it, it was just a fantastic week. And I just loved every minute of it. And it would have been yeah, a fantastic story. But unfortunately, I just lost in the final. <laughs> But, but a fantastic effort. No, Great run. Yeah, a sign of things to come. That's the exciting bit, isn't it? Hopefully, what you say now, you know, we'll be able to look back at this in time and go, wow, that was so early, but look what Hayden's done since. That's the really exciting bit. Definitely, yeah. you know, definitely. It's like I say, it's, it, it's all about, I'm at the start of my career and hopefully in the next few years I can turn professional and then uh, hopefully I don't look back from there. Yeah. And what does the season ahead hold for you then? So, I mean, I know that there's been talk about almost uh, the EPSB kind of new competitions and thinking about how, you know, to support the game outside of the tour. But what, what does this season hold for you? I think that, that new Open tournament, what they've mm. announced a couple of weeks ago, I'll, I'll definitely be, be, be doing that. Um, obviously, there's, uh, there's the English Amateur Tour, what's already on the, on the EPSB. That's, I'll be doing that again. Um, the the Portugal event again, the Europeans. Hopefully that's running again, and uh, and I'll have and I'll have another crack at that. Um, and and that that Q tour as well. They've, they've mentioned that. Um, mm. I don't know if you know much about that, um, but they've um, they've announced it last year, but they didn't run it because of COVID. Uh, but they're hoping right. to run it this year, and there's loads of qualifying rounds for that. So uh, I'll I'll have a go at that as well. So there's lots of things that keep me busy. Yeah, and, and how do you keep busy? I mean, what else do you do? I, I don't know if you get much time away from the table because you must be practising loads as well, but do you get much time to do other stuff and what are you interested in? I, I do. I, I normally, I practice around five days a week um, and then have the weekends off. Um, but one of my biggest hobbies, uh, which I've been doing from when I was born, really, uh, I, I go to watch motorbike racing. I, I'm a massive fan of motorbike racing and, and, and all that. So I, we go to all the different tracks around the UK and, and things and, uh, and we go and watch those for the weekends, uh, camp in the motorhome, mum and dad's got a motorhome. Um, oh. so we go there and we meet up with loads of friends and things and, and have the weekend away and it's really nice, so I, I do enjoy doing that. Cool, what, what sort of bikes are they? I mean, I, I, I left it alone a bit, but I'm, I used to be really big into Speedway, which is perhaps not what you mentioned in there, but... I don't, I, I, I don't I've never been to a Speedway uh, event, but I do watch it on TV. I, I have watched the World the, the world Championships on there and stuff. Mm. I have watched that, but it's mainly um, super bikes that, that the roads, yeah. that race and things. It's, so the super bikes, the World super bikes, the, the MotoGP and things, Formula yeah. One, I'm into that as well. So I'd, I'd like all of that. That's a high octane life away from the table. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how did you actually get into snooker in the first place, Hayden? I suppose we should have asked this right at the start. But you, you know, <laughs> you hear a lot of things. There, a lot of players they get tables for Christmas, and that's how they get into it. Was it like that for you? Um, not really. No, I mean, I I started playing really when I was about seven or eight. Uh, my dad used to. Um, 
my dad used to take me to the North Knots Arena, funnily enough, after um, after school. Um, and I used to stand on a box and I used to play on the, the on the full size <laughs> tables and things and I used to love it. I used to love it. Um, and and my uncle used to play, um, and then me my uncle, my granddad, and my dad used to all play. They used to go down on a Saturday night or something to the to the club and, and they used to play and, and I used to be picking the balls out from all the time and and, and like crying all the time because they never used to give me a shot because I was too yeah. young. <laughs> and, um, so I just from there I just always wanted to have a go. And then when I had a go, I I felt like I, uh, a lot of people around me said that I've got like a bit of a natural talent for the game, um, and me like my stance and everything like that. It, it's like kind of natural. Um, yeah. So from then on, really, I've never looked back, and I've loved it. Oh, fantastic! And um, it's, it's, as you say, Lee, it's a common story, isn't it? This thing about you know almost having the small tables at the start. I guess it's that thing around with any sport. You always get encouragement in the early days, don't you? When you're young and somebody sees something in you. But I guess at some point you have to develop that self belief that you think, well, they're being nice, but actually I think I'm onto something here. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when I was younger as well, I used to play football a lot. Um, mm. I used to play for my local workshop team, football. Um, and I played for them for about six or seven years. But after the football finished, like the match, I used to go into the club and play snooker. Yeah. Um, and I used to enjoy playing snooker more than I did used to play the football. So from, from then on, I just made a commitment to myself that I'm actually, I'm, I'm all right at football, but I'm a lot better at snooker. I've got more chance of making something out of, like a career out of snooker. Um, so I, I attempted to, to, to make a career out of snooker and... and and I'm not doing too bad so far, but obviously I want to, to push on a lot further. Yeah, definitely. And what, what's your aspiration? So I think it's obvious really where you want to go, but you know, what are you hoping to do this year? Um, this year is just about obviously um, getting lots of practice in, got, getting lots of match practice in the, the different pro ams and the English amateurs and the open tournaments and things like that. Um, and then ultimately building up to Q School next year, really. Um, if I can um, improve a lot on this year and, and start getting to those last last round matches in Q School and, and things and um, and maybe sneak uh, maybe get over the line in one of them and, and, and get on the tour. That's my aspirations for this year, really. Yeah, and it's such a brutal way to try and get your card, isn't it, at Q School? Because you, you look at the names that are in Q School and it's, it's just a who's who. It's it's horrible. It's to be fair, it's horrible. Obviously, mm. everybody um, everybody in in Q school really on the day is good enough to beat anybody. Um, yeah. So it, it all depends, and best of sevens as well. Uh, it's not the it's not the the longest of formats. So I mean, a couple of times this year, I found myself two 0 down straight away in half an hour, uh, and then it instantly puts you under pressure straight away. Um, so, yeah, and it's hard, it's hard to come back from that. Yeah, yeah, but um, but it's the same for everybody. So you've just got to try and, and do your best. But uh, but yeah, it's brutal. There's a reason why nobody wants to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And of course, you, you nearly skipped all that by winning the Europeans. And I, I suppose you'll be looking, you know, to do that again and maybe gain your card that way. Definitely, definitely yeah. Obviously, it's I'm 20 now, so it's, it's obviously the last year that I can do it. Um, so hopefully uh, when that gets announced, I'll, um, I'll be able to, to go over there and do that again. Um, and like I say, I'll um, fancy my chances of, um, of, of at least doing what I did last year and hopefully get that one, get that, that victory in the final. Yeah, because that must have gave you so much confidence. Definitely. You know, and a bit of belief in your game as well. Yeah, because that's, that's, that's one thing what I've not really had before is, is belief in my game. I've, a lot of people around me have, have told me that that you're more than good enough to be able to do it, but I've never really seen that from with from myself. Um, so be so to be able to get to the final there and to to beat the players that I did um, was really really satisfying, and it was such a confidence booster for me going forward. And and I think that's it's stood me in good stead for for now, really. Yeah, absolutely. And where do you feel, you know, this, the, the current state of the sport, if you like, you know, it's, it, there's a lot of people, Gods of Snooker was on TV not long ago, and a lot of people harking back to the 80s and 90s. I mean, how, how do you feel the sport's going now? You've obviously got, you know, kind of some icons in there, some slightly younger ones like Jack Lazowski, and obviously him and Judd were doing the thing around the championships, world championships. 
Um, you seem a positive fellow, so I'm assuming you probably feel quite hopeful about where snooker's going. Definitely, definitely. I mean, like you've just mentioned there, Lazowski and, and Trump and, and Kyron Wilson, I mean, they're obviously the mm. big three uh, that's coming up and, and obviously they're the youngest of the top 16 and things. Um, but but below that, there's a lot of there's a lot of good junior talents out there, and I mean I've played lots of them myself, and the the the, the brilliant players, but they've just not they've just not been recognised yet, um, and they've, they've not been um, they've not been successful at Q school and things. I mean, I mean like Lee said, Q school is so difficult that it don't matter how good you are, it doesn't ma- it doesn't necessarily mean mm. that you're going to qualify. Um, so there's a lot of junior players out there. There's a lot of talent out there, and and um, and I'd like to class myself in that barrier. Um, but but it's just about getting to that next level, that next little step up, um, which will take us onto the tour and, and then be recognised a bit more. And I suppose that's where the mental side of the game comes in, because you've obviously got a huge amount of natural talent, but as you said before, that that can be the difference sometimes, the mental side. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, you've you've one of the biggest things for us juniors, I think, and, and for me in particular, is you've never got to give up because if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Yeah. And things. So you've got to you've got to keep thinking that you are good enough. You've got to keep remembering the achievements that you've that, that you've made before, um, and you've got to realise that actually you can do this, and and it's a long road, um, but you just never give up, and you will get there in the end. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I used to go through, obviously I played a bit and I used to go through stages as well. I've been on the table on a break and I've, you know, I've never been the strongest mentally, but I've talked myself into missing balls. I'm saying yeah. when when I'm queuing up for a ball yeah, and it might be an easy ball, I'm saying you're going to miss this. And it's, yeah, it's just self-sabotage. It is, it is. And I know exactly what you're talking about there because I've done it. I've done it. I did it yesterday in a practice session. So yeah. it's yeah. So it's it's a horrible feeling to have. It really is. But but, but on the on the other hand, you can talk yourself into pot and balls. Yeah. And it's yeah. just crazy how it works. It is. It's it's a very very strange game because like I say, one day you can play out your skin. You can you can be knocking breaks in all the time, and you can you can wipe the floor with somebody. But then the next day you can play the same person on the same table. And, and they've wiped the floor with you and it's it's just such a frustrating game. Yeah, it's very much on the day, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Do you find a certain, again, this is interested as a non-player really, so do you find there's certain shots that you think less about? You know you're saying there about you're talking yourself in or out of a shot. Do you find certain shots, oh, that's my, that's easy, I, I'm good at those, and then other ones where you think, oh, no, I'm out of position, I'm going to have to play that shot and I don't like these ones. There's, there's, a, there's, um, Obviously, the majority of them I do like, and obviously I fancy knocking them in uh, the majority of the time. But the, there is a couple of there is a couple of shots that I don't like. Um, that, like I said, I'll sometimes I'll I'll try and play a more difficult positional shot to like to leave myself on a different shot. That, mm. Like because mm. there's like a, there's a high black that I don't like playing. Um, it's it's just on one side of the table. On the other side of the table. I'm really confident on it, but on the other side, I can't seem to play it. Um, so I, I try not to leave myself that shot if I can, but obviously if you've got to, you've got to. Mm. Yeah, it's very interesting that you'll, you'll actually, the shot before, you maybe try and gain d- different positions because you can see that shot coming up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and obviously, obviously the, what I've got to do is obviously I've just got to keep playing that shot in practice just keep playing it over and over and over again until it gets to a point where I feel as confident on that side as I do the other side. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll edit this bit out, Aidan, so that when any of your future opponents watch, yeah. that they don't go, ah, now I know what to do. <laughs> Although you yeah. didn't say which side, you didn't say which side. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lee, I don't know if you had any any more that you wanted to cover at all. Uh, no, I think Aidan's sort of covered everything uh, that, that I wanted to know, you know, personally. Um, I think, are we, are we clearing the colours? Yeah, we're clearing the colours. Well, you're going to love this, Hayden. This is, uh, 
<laughs> this is a new thing I'm trying to do. So, so what we're trying to do is just to almost go a bit more quick fire to finish, really, and uh, and just go individually into some questions that there's no right or wrong. It's just a quick question. You don't need to think about it too much. Um, but in the style of clearing the colours. So my first question to you will be for the yellow ball, and then I'll move to to uh, to lead to do the green and so on. Okay, so let's try it out. <laughs> so. The yellow ball then. So who do you find the funniest player, either on the tour or just somebody that you've met? Who's the funniest player you've met? Uh, I, don't, I don't even know. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's a tough one, that. Um, I'd probably have to it's, say... Um, uh, I don't even know. I don't even know. Um <laughs> Or even someone you've seen on the videos or you, you get an opinion on them that you think, oh, they, they seem a good laugh? Um, I think... Um, the, <laughs> I think... Um, I, don't, I don't even know. Um, there's nobody. There's nobody. There's nobody. There's nobody. There's nobody. There's nobody. No, everybody's boring. <laughs> 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 no, I think... Um, obviously, Selby. Selby's a... A funny guy. Obviously, off the table, he's um, he's always laughing and joking and stuff. And you see, you hear loads of people talking about him. So I'd have to say Selwyn. Mm. Of course, you oh. can see uh, Hayden. <laughs> you can you can go <laughs> yeah. for yourself in that question. <laughs> <laughs> I think oh, wow. I think I think we I think in future we might move that to the black ball question. It seems like a really difficult yellow, to be honest. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but thanks for that, Hayden. So, uh, oh, Lee, over to the green. Okay, green ball question. Uh, your favourite venue outside the crucible, outside of the crucible? Um, everybody says the Temper Drome in Berlin for the German Masters, so I, I think uh, I'd love to play there one day. Yeah, it, it looks like a fantastic atmosphere. Definitely. And you can see all the tables. Definitely, yeah. It's a different setup to them all, but I like it. Yeah, great. Fantastic. A big following in Germany as well. Um, yeah. the brown, okay, the Browns. So who do you, in your opinion, and you can say yourself if you want, out of all the players who have not won the World Championship yet, who do you think the next one to get their first win will be? Karen Wilson. Nah, that's interesting. Uh, you've said, I'm going to tell you that, there's two answers already you've given the same as what Jackson Page gave. Okay, so that's, that's very interesting. Um, oh, you, you've got a... You got a tricky blue. I think you should be able to get this one in, but um, Lee, this is just this is a bit of a tricky blue, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a, it's a thin cut. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you're answering these, Hayden, not me. <laughs> uh, which actor would you get to play you if there was a film made of your life? Um, I'd probably say. Tom Hanks, because everybody seems to like him, um, and he and he can play any character. So um, and he can make the character seem like a funny person. So I wouldn't mind. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't mind Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah, it's a good show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a golden one. Very good. Okay, well, the, the pink, the pink might be easy. It depends. It, it, it depends what side it's on, really, doesn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, is there anything away from the game that we can't Google about you that maybe is something we don't know that you've not told us yet? Anything interesting or any facts about yourself? Um, you, you got any pets or? I've got a pet. Uh, well, me. My grandma and granddad's, um, they've got a dog. Uh, I always go around there all the time and, and visit the dog. Um, we've got a cat, me and mum and dad. We've just bought a, a cat. Um, so we, um, we, we, we like cats and dogs. We're, we're a big pet family, really. Um, do, you, do you visit your grandparents as well? Because it seems like you visited the dog. But uh... No, I, I just want to see the dog, yeah. <laughs> it's a package deal. <laughs> yeah, no, I do go around a lot because I mean they, I've got to get it in as well. They they've supported me so much through snooker as well, so um, I'm trying to give a bit back to them as well. Just trying to go and see them all the time and make sure they're all right and look after them and things. Uh, good man. Have they got a copy of your your um, your shootout video? Have they got that? They've got that. Yeah, they they they. My granddad watches it in the morning when he gets up sometimes. Ah, oh, brilliant. That's so nice. Um, um well. I mean, this is a big black. It's a, it's an important one, really. And if you obviously, if you get this, it's an impeccable clearance. So over to you, Lee. Yeah, it's a tough one. Uh, 
if I had this black, I'd probably draw it. <laughs> but it's really tough. Uh, what would you call your autobiography if you were to write one? Um, that's a very, very good question. Um, it's a tough one. It is. Um, I, I don't. I'd probably have to have to go with uh, something simple like snooker loopy or something like that. Um, yeah. and, and I use it as a loop, obviously, of all my career and things. <laughs> ah, you could, nice. Considering you've been put on the spot, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's great because all what you've done there really is uh, not only have you cleared up, so you've potted the black and you've made a great clearance, but you've also given us the episode title. So when we put this out, we'll use the snooker loopy as well. That'll be on the, the <laughs> title there. So what a, what a cracker! It means, it means we don't have to think of them if you do that. That's great. <laughs> 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 so i mean all that really remains uh hayden i feel like we could talk for for loads more as well and, and you're a really interesting fella and it would be great if you if you if you're up for it pro, you know maybe at a future date coming back in and letting us know how you're getting on in your season absolutely definitely yeah i'd, I'd love that uh, that'd be good and we'll look forward to it and obviously look out for the calendar and see when you've got the events on and and obviously somebody in Nottingham as well I'll be, I'll be rooting for you I hope that uh, you know you have a great season and we'll see you on the tour before too long hopefully now thank you very much hopefully yeah it's great to have you on Hayden uh, I'll certainly be looking keenly at your results and uh, I think there's big things ahead for you so thanks very much for coming on it's been great no, to talk thank you, for that. thank you very much I appreciate that Brilliant. All the best. You too.